call trees are a fundamental feature of profilers. They accumulate all invocations of a specific method at any particular call stack. However, there are some methods that have performance characteristics that vary greatly depending on their parameters. JProfiler has a feature called method splitting that allows you to split the call tree for different parameter values. What I'm profiling here is the animated Bezier curve demo that draws this curve here many times per second. Presumably, the performance of the drawing routine depends on the size of the canvas here. Let's see what we can find out. For this purpose, it's a good idea to show method signatures as well as the average invocation times. There are two interesting methods here. First, draw demo, which performs the actual drawing. And down here, create graphics 2D, which prepares a buffering image. Now method splitting works like this. You right click the method of interest and select split method with a script from the context menu. In this script, we can work with the parameters up here to build a string that is then used for grouping the call tree into different subtrees. Let's have a look at those parameters in detail. First one here is a script context, and you can use that to store data across different invocations of this script, and that's for advanced use cases. The second one is the class object where the method is defined. And because it's an instance method, you also get the actual instance on which the method is being called. Finally, down here, you have the parameters of the method. The first one is the width of the canvas, and the second one is the height of the canvas. Now let's say we would like to split the call tree by the area of the canvas so we get an idea of how much work is being done. Let me paste this little expression here. This expression calculates the area of the canvas and embeds it into a string. Let's apply this script and check what it does to the call tree. First we have to locate the same call stack as before. And here we are, and indeed, there is a single method splitting node here that actually shows us the current area of the canvas in pixels. Now, the area of the canvas, of course, doesn't change until I change it, but that's perfect for this demo to keep things simple. Before we perform any further experiments, let's split this method above here as well. Unfortunately, this method doesn't get any parameters that allow us to calculate the size of the canvas, but we do have the current object and we can get the size of the canvas from there. Let me paste a script. It's slightly more complex than the previous expression. It's a real script with a return statement. It gets the size of the UI element and performs the same calculation as the expression for the other method. If you ever want to remove or change method splittings, this is the place to do it in the session settings dialog. Let's apply the new settings and open the call tree again. Both methods are now split and it's time to change the canvas size. Let's put this window into full screen mode and then go back to the JProfiler window. Now this is where method splitting gets interesting, when there are multiple splitting nodes. This is the splitting node for the small canvas size, and this is the splitting node for the full screen canvas size. As you can see, there is more than a hundred times as many pixels in the full screen size than in the small canvas size. But the ratios for drawing the curves and for preparing the buffer image are much smaller than that. Try to use your imagination to think of use cases in your own applications where method splitting can make a difference and produce additional valuable insight. One way to look at it is that method splitting is a little like URL splitting, just generalized and applicable to all methods and not just special ones.